What's up fellas? What we're looking at right here is a leech bucket of wood ash. I've been saving the wood ash from my fireplace and I wanted to see how hard it was to make some potassium hydroxide. Here is the liquor we got out of the first run. This is a yellow liquor and against popular belief this is not potassium hydroxide solution. This is actually a potash solution which is potassium carbonate. Yeah, there may be some minuscule amounts of potassium hydroxide in this, but for the most part, this is mostly potassium carbonate, which has a pH of 11 or 12. So it's, it is a highly basic substance, and you want to filter this stuff out a couple times because the first couple of things that come out of it will be the rock salt, which is calcium chloride, and the sodium chloride. And there's also some, some iron oxides and stuff in there that you want to filter out before you get to this point here. And what we're looking at here is mostly potash, which is potassium carbonate. And it is a very highly deliquescent substance. It can be used as a desiccant, but it's not potassium hydroxide. So all these videos showing you this is potassium hydroxide, that's not the case at all. This is definitely going to be the um, potassium carbonate but you may be able to calcine this and then mix it with water and get potassium hydroxide all right so it looks like we're going to get about 66 grams of that material out of every pot of the yellow water all right so we got about 217 grams of this stuff so we're going to split it up and I think we'll calcine half of it and we'll try a different method for the other half. So the reaction we're about to observe is called a metathesis reaction where we convert the calcium hydroxide into calcium carbonate and the potassium carbonate will convert to potassium hydroxide. We're using calcium oxide as a source of calcium hydroxide because calcium oxide converts to calcium hydroxide when you get it wet but we were able to get this with fire and rocks so it's something you can just get off the ground grams. you don't have to buy it and that's kind of the goal of the project was to see if we could do this without having to purchase anything so the reaction um, requires like a two to one mix or something like that sometimes three to one and I don't know about how valid the process of calcining potassium carbonate or calcining the dirty potassium hydroxide would be. We may not be able to to calcine the potassium carbonate, but I think we can. And if we can, it should turn it into potassium oxide, which could then simply be mixed with water, converting it into potassium hydroxide, which may be a better way to go, but after what I've seen with it melting and boiling, I'm not sure yet. So in this reaction, we're using some limestone. Definitely something going on in there, that's for sure. Look at that. It has cleared that solution up. As I said before, we had a black liquor to start with. What do you suppose that's all about? Weird, right? Definitely some kind of dance going on there, huh? Check that out. Okay, so now we're gonna take that yellow solution and we're cooking it off in glass because I believe the stainless steel pot may have been contaminating it with chromium, making it toxic but I'm not sure. Yeah, this stuff's sitting at 500 degrees right now and it's still freaking wet. So, <laughs> so the melting point of potassium hydroxide is in the 700 degree range. So we haven't melted it. This is just proving that it's impure. So maybe we didn't react all of the potassium carbonate 
Um, I don't know what to do at this point with this stuff. Okay, so I suspected it's high deliquescence cause for drastic measures. We're just gonna have to crank the heat up according to this. Okay, so this is what I got out of that solution, sodium hydroxide. We think it's sodium hydroxide. We'll have to figure out a way to test for that. We can do a flame test. Well, that ain't gonna work. We can get potassium in both. So I don't know. Now I actually have an extensive surplus of potassium hydroxide. I'm gearing up for a project that me, Ben, and Mescal are putting together. We're gonna to be doing some geopolymer work, but I wanted to just kind of examine the possibility of making my own materials. But um, you'd have to do this on a grand scale for it to be economical. I think this is like $40 worth. And um, and I'd probably have to charge you $800 for this. <laughs> for my time you know as busy as i am um an hour's a hundred bucks easy so i don't know it was kind of an all-day fooling around with it sort of deal you're not constantly messing with it of course but you know so is it possible yes is it economical i don't think so unless you have no choice but it's still nice to know what it takes i just wanted to examine the situation and see what we were dealing with here and uh, I suppose uh, with a huge supply of ashes and some free time on your hands, you could make five gallon buckets of this stuff every day. But it would take an enormous amount of ashes. I would say a truckload of ashes for a five gallon bucket, uh, potassium hydroxide probably.